Okay, so Ronnie changed his name to Whaley or Wally. What is it, Whaley? It's Whaley. Okay, and then uh, if we have another Justin, you have to come up with another name. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, here we go. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Uh, what episode is this? This is episode six. Episode six. Um, you know, the last, the, when we did it before you, episode six had Edwin San Juan in it, and he, it was a pure sex episode because his <laughs> wife was on it, and he called it episode sex, which is his pun. And then I saw him last night, so that was a, he's, he's so much thinner, he's ripped. Um, but now I'm Is in, this? yeah, he, he lost like 30 pounds in the pandemic. What are you talking about? Uh, one of our friends, that's a comedian who, OG Filipino, comic. OG Filipino comic who works the, the com, I think it's the V theater in planet Hollywood, but because they have COVID right now, they are reopening in April, but he does, he was headlining some shows last night. So the, the mm. comedy club I'm playing right now in Vegas is in a strat called the LA Comedy Club, and they have a six o'clock show, uh, which is the um, Redneck Magician. It just Justin was supposed to play that slot, and then uh, they gave it to the other guy. Um, remember, you were supposed to hit. You were supposed to get that slot. I was. Remember, he asked me to ask you, and then you sent him a message. <laughs> he seemed so surprised. <laughs> Don't you remember? I was. It was like two years ago, three years ago, and then because oh it, yeah, he he was trying to build another theater. That's what he was he, he was he was doing. Yeah, and then you did yeah. the Power Ranger bit, and he liked he liked that. <laughs> and then that's when Luz fell in love with you, I think. I think so. Yeah, he does this Power Ranger bit where he dresses up as a Power Ranger. This the same tightness, by the way, in his body. <laughs> and um so he he got <laughs> he, he got extra material on the leg on the legs and the ass for sure <laughs> so imagine a power ranger that got uh, that got um j he fell into a beehive so his lower half of his body was just all inject like just purely fucking bee stings and uh then, then you did that you, when you throw the cards out Louis is like yeah. this Louis is like this she was like doing it in the air too like as if she was the one <laughs> on stage doing it yeah and then after that uh, i think that's when the, the owner was like yeah ask justin if he wants to take a residence here at six and then i think it was down wow. to you and the wow. redneck cowboy well yeah oh no the, the redneck guy was doing it already but i think what was going on was he was trying to build another showroom and then COVID oh, that, hit. you know what 100 percent. that showroom was going to be huge yeah. That was the what was going on. He was yeah. talking about opening us another show. He needed another uh, resident headliner there, and then COVID hit. But he was, you know, yeah. That, know, are that, they still that, doing that's it? That's crazy because that was that was your dream to play a resident Vegas. Remember before this hit? Yeah, that was your actually his dream when you at, at six. You thought about it? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to be. I mean, I wanted to be Lance Burns, so I wanted to like have a you know headline. Hey man, show Lance Burns amazing. He was the, he Dude, was, he's, uh, he's, I don't see sex. This is what girls tell me, not me. Gr he, girls say he's <laughs> sexier than Dave Copperfield. Is that true? Um, you know what? I can see it because he's such a, uh, Southern gentleman. Like he's super cool, dude. Like, yeah, he's like one of those guys that acts like he's known you for like years. He's amazing. So welcoming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's from Louisville, Kentucky. He's like, yeah. Cause this is Louisville, Kentucky, you know, Southern charm. Yeah, so he's uh, he's awesome, man. He's good. He's really and, good. And Lance Burton got replaced, I think, before the COVID by someone else. Yeah, he retired, and then I think Jabberwockies took over. That's or right. Like that. He took the Jabberwockies yeah. took over there. Which you know what, their Jabberwocky show is not as good as the America's Got Talent show because the main guy Reynold Reynard, mm -hmm. he he produces it. I think he's he's co-owner of it now, but he's not performing. So there's a bunch of new guys. 
that are yeah. oh, you just don't know you don't you don't know who who's yeah who. you don't know it, it, it's kind of like blue man group they just have wow. they, they have guys who they think oh are, yeah they train yeah they train them they teach them the routines they're, they're like they're legit break dancers they're amazing talented from dancers. all over the world now so there's auditions yeah. you know so you don't yeah, know and then crazy. there's like a little kid at the end that's wearing a mask like who's like six yeah that yeah uh out. I forgot that there's a there's a name for that the the the, the younger Jabberwock. There's a specific well, name. The, but. Yeah, the the un PC word is midget, but I think <laughs> <laughs> he came out and you're like, he looks like a little person. Like you're like that yeah. that can't be a, a, a kid because his moves are insane. But it is a kid. Yeah, yeah but it is a kid because yeah, yeah. they're talent and, and he's Filipino too. Yeah, like these these guys are amazing. Maybe just I think the black guy. Yeah, that guy okay. from. Uh, one of them from Quest Crew, Dietrich, actually had to sub in for the Jabberwockies on one of their shows, put on a mask, and no one could tell. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I believe it. You know, a yeah. lot of them come out of sack, like, uh, you know, Crit, uh, you know. They come from Chris's Chris. fucking um, uh, crack house. Chris's, uh, <laughs> Chris's, Chris Marzan's uh, fat farm is where, they, uh, <laughs> is where they're, uh, oh, they're bred. <laughs> they're bred and then they're released into the, uh, into the community. <laughs> open range no, but yeah like a lot of them those are like I, he calls them like his nephews or they're like family friends but they're like you know really tight so he considers them family but one of them like moved, he, like when he was um, right out of high school or something he moved he moved to Vegas to be a part of that and live on his own like 17, 18 years old or whatever I was talking to the kid and he's like I, I he's like I liked it then I hated it because I I couldn't be a kid anymore he's yeah. like I, I had to like I had to work. I had to like be. Re- he's like, he, I had to be responsible. I had to pay bills, make money, and like live on my own. It's like I didn't. I didn't enjoy it because he just lost. Did you talk he, to he them after the you. show when we when we open when I me and Joey opened for them and Joe and Joe Clay? The did you, did you, did you know, talk I, didn't, to them? I didn't get to talk to them. Dude, I think that was I the did. original crew though at the show. Yeah, the original crews at the show. I think I, I think I met them. Yeah, we did. I think so. Yeah, yeah. They came out into the crowd. Remember, I think they hung out with Dude, us for this. Dude, this this show we did maybe five, six years ago was basically the, it was star studded Filipino talent. Like it was hosted by C- uh, Celeste. Apple. What's her name? Uh, oh, Ariane Celeste was, Celeste was, I think she just went, no, she was just an audience. Wasn't she? No, she was, she went there. up with she was, she Nia Peoples. Um, yeah. Tia, Tia Carrera. Yeah. Uh, they had mm. Jabba Walkies, Qbert, Joe yeah. Coy, and then, Black Eyed Peas, obviously, were the, the headliners. Apple but, Taboo were there. Yeah, Joey had to go after the Jabberwockies. Dude, that was insane, man. Yeah, and he was he was yeah. on his... When I went to the green room, because I was on first at seven when nobody was there, which I would rather do. I actually would rather this, go go the, and be the warm-up guy while people are walking in the suns of my eyes than going the after the Jabberwockies. Out, yeah. like, that, that was really crazy. <laughs> I, I remember the sun being out when you were on stage. Dude, I couldn't see the eyes. I was like this. <laughs> The whole time. <laughs> How bad was that? How bad was it? Was it bad? I wouldn't say it's bad. It's just hard. It's just doing these like outdoor like Filipino festival shows in general is just hard. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, this wasn't. Yeah. This was uh, more. This was the Greek theater. No, this was the. Uh, yeah, it was a show. Yeah, but there was just it's nobody in the like, audience yet. Like it, they were still yeah, skewering in and trickling in and walking around. That's what, it has that Filipino festival vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then just like just you go know, up and yeah. talk before the, sh- the before the real show starts. Yeah. And then me and Joey would do uh, heads or tails to go who would go first or second. And I always went first. Like I, I, honest, I told this to Justin. I think he has one of those magic fake coins. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's the same. It's always, coin. it's always heads or tails. Like he just, <laughs> he just, he just goes, okay, you, I'll pick uh, heads, I guess, you know. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what? I'd rather do that because the Jabberwockies killed, but Joey's yeah, act destroyed. is made. To, to follow anything and in the hardest situations, it's almost like he's a four by four, like what do you call it? Jeep utility Jeep. He, <laughs> he can kind of do any terrain, you know, <laughs> like really if, if we're all, if we're, we were all vehicles, I'd be Mercedes. Uh, the jo- Joey would just be hardcore terrain, all purpose vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jackie's I'd here. be a family van. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Ron. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. How are you? I'm not in the middle of the 
<clears throat> I'm good. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Hello. Hey, Jackie. Hello. I'll, I'll, Hello. I'll introduce you guys. You guys, uh, so that's, this is Justin. He's uh, my comedian magician friend. He does uh, he started magic at six and works comic clubs as a magician. Awesome. Hey. I have a friend uh, from Vancouver. He's he's Jed. He's a, he he owns a G- DJ school. Hello, hey, what's Jed. up? He does the music. How are you? And this is our young producer, uh, Whaley, from New York City, who's helping me produce. Uh, Gl- he he produces glamorous, the show for glamorous. me. Glamorous. Hello, yeah. Whaley. Very glamorous. We, Hello. And we have another comedian, um, Jackie Sanchez, um, who is coming in. She should be coming in any moment, but we can start without her. Well, but. she'll be coming in hot. She will come. I told her to come in with a Ferrari, <laughs> just straight in. Uh, the other, the Jackie Sanchez, she's in uh, Miami. Is where she's at. Ja- Jackie Sanchez, Miami, and I. Th- and she knows a lot of our friends. Uh, she knows Jimmy Earl, who who's one of our comedian friends that books a lot of shows across the U.S. And uh, she's he, he's he's booked her many times or a few times. And says she's hilarious, and I've known her in, just in the first couple of months because we've done a couple of Zoom shows together. And she's so funny, and she's young, talented, and she's. I think she's going to be like really successful in the future because she's just really good, you know, naturally just really talking awesome. and funny. So she's going to be joining us shortly. I just told, gave her the um, the heads up that she could come in from four forty five to five in between that time. But um, I'm early. I, I, oh, that's fine. <laughs> okay. um, we're, 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 we're recording either way. Either way, this is really candid, anyways. So I'm just happy to see you. After the last time I saw you was probably when we did the we, the, we had um, a Korean dinner. Right, we were over in uh, uh, over over in Hollywood uh, in Koreatown having a very good Korean dinner. Yeah. Yeah, and Jackie and I uh, reconnected overseas through food. Right. You, uh, this is a meat-based, I assume this is a meat-based podcast. Is that correct? Yes. Everybody has a <laughs> stick of meat of your choice, dried for, or dried or cured. <laughs> uh, I, know, I, was feed, I was feeding you on the, on the bus with pieces of meat. You're just like, hey, Ron, yeah. and you're asking me a question. I'm like, I just put this in your mouth and chew. <laughs> <laughs> we were always in, uh, yeah, it was, we, we would go to these little town because we were doing that, that uh, Armed Forces Entertainment run. And we would stop at these little towns in, in Europe and Eastern Europe. Had to be two years ago now, right? Or Yeah, April. April would be two years. Oh, wow. And yeah, um, So in next month, yeah. That's too bad. All that material that I wrote on that needs to go on an album. And it's still so funny. going to go on yeah. that album. <laughs> you know, that, that one joke you did, that you actually wrote for Antoine. Antoine. Yeah, I wrote it for Antoine Young. Still going to do it. Still going to name it. Still going to mention his name, which could get him work. Could get him work. You know, he. I saw him try to do, do it, and he. It, it doesn't work as well as you do it. Right. But he he does it, but he goes, I can't do it how Jackie does it. And I'm like, I don't know why. I guess because you're a one-liner guy or something. And it's like, I don't know. When yeah, Jack, he's a one-liner. Jackie saw. Yeah, mine's kind more of a, storytelling. Right. And uh, to to to, pref- to tell you guys what it was, he where he's a really funny, really funny uh, one liner, silly uh, smart, comic. yeah, really great comic, and really lovable, yeah, you know, and also From like Compton. six two, and stacked, right, like literally like super big buff black guy we used to play the football. He tells me, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'll just tell you what happened. So I had not met him, and he had never traveled through uh, customs before. And they held him back at customs in London for like thirty minutes, and they were talking to him, but it did it. So he finally makes it through customs, and he says, uh, "The first thing I say when I when I meet uh, Antoine Young is, did you smile at the customs agent, Antoine?'" And the first thing he said to me was, "Why is that going to make everyone more comfortable?" Large black man <laughs> smiles at the customs agent. A valid question. Uh, when an older white lady asks a younger black man to smile, it's weird. But I had a reason, and it's because Antoine Young has braces, and there is not a terrorist in the world who has braces. <laughs> because if you have braces, you have a future, right? Three years from now, you want to smile at somebody. <laughs> he smiled for the rest of that trip and was, ne- was never stopped again. Oh man, yeah, because it was a it was such a different array of comics. So it was Jackie Cash, and we're all we're all headlining. We just switch up every night. So yeah. Vargas Mason. Was he did a nice the, job with the rotation on that. Un- yeah, it was great. You know, and Amy Anderson, and me, Amy and then, Anderson, right? Ron Josel. Are you familiar with My, his work? Ron Josel and. Uh, 
yeah, you, me, and then it was Antoine Young who had to host the whole time and just right. kept getting better and better. And we'd all be like, oh, let's go follow that guy. <laughs> and because uh, <Yeah>. Vargas <laughs> and, and Vargas, I think, I, th- I think because there were so many of us, I was like, you have to have a host, man. Even if it's us yeah. rotating the host gig, you know. Oh yeah. And and then he brought Ron, and and then he brought Antoine, and I think he he was like, because Antoine had never done one of the, you know, the first one of those international gigs you did. You're like, really super fun, and right. like the fourth one, you're like, how much does it pay? Where where do they put this up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Justin's done uh, those USO tours as well. Uh, he 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 actually went to Eastern Europe, uh, a different. He, he did a lot of the Kazakhstan area. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You've done you've done many of these tours before, right? You're many asking me USO tours. Uh, J- uh, Jackie Kashan. Oh, oh, she, oh done, me? You, no. I, yes. Uh, I've only done. I've done probably four, and two of them were okay. for Vargas, and two and uh, two or three of them were for Vargas, and then one was Iraq, like 15 years ago, for for uh, and that was that was the most dangerous one. So, that oh, was do you dumb. actually? Yeah. Was it dangerous? Like you actually heard? Uh, it was. Oh, it was heard. dangerous as far as like we were in a war zone. But I don't Jesus. think that they can. If I think the first comic who dies, the, I mean, they protected the fuck out of us. Pardon my yeah. language, but it was because they can't. You know, the, I mean, the first co- there then no more shows. Once once <laughs> one of the one of the entertainer dies, they're not going to be bringing in Taylor Swift or whoever. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. We did uh, play. Uh, we got. We had to have dinner with another uh, group. It was a, a musical group from. Uh, I can't remember. Oh man! They're oh from, right, they're famous, or they they're were very famous. Yeah, the the not the Foo Fighters, like something like that. I forgot what because uh, I I don't listen to them, but we were so happy to meet them. Right, right. It was on that weird Turkish Air Force base. Yeah, how many countries did we do? Izmir. Were you in Izmir or Inserlik? Or we're Inserlik. No. That's it. Yeah, Inserlik. Have you done a bunch, Justin? Not a whole bunch. I mean, I did. I did Turkey. Uh, uh, I did the the what was it? Medi- I did the Mediterranean run and the uh, the Middle East run. Yeah. Mediterranean run. Yeah, that, that, that sounds had, beautiful. Uh, yeah, we did Italy and um, Greece as part of that. It was pretty wow. cool. Wow. I knew you guys were allowed to go. Did they take you out like how they took us out to, to yeah. eat? Yeah, dude. They, Isn't yeah. that the best part? Dude, it was awesome, man. Like, we, they took us to like Sicily. Like, uh, we had a horse meat. It was awesome. Wow. wow. How did that taste? It tastes, it, it's like the most tender <laughs> skirt steak you'll ever have. It's <laughs> now, I'm not even joking. Like, I was with Jerry Garcia. You know Jerry Garcia? Yeah. And uh, it was his first time out of the country. And he's hardcore East LA Mexican. And he had that, and he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, man, this is this is better than carne asada. Like straight <laughs> up, <laughs> I was like, I know, right? It's so like tender, and it was awesome. Yeah, it was so good. I think there was one place that we all went, and then they had this weird. It was almost like a station outside that were rotating, ro- had rotisserie chicken and also ribs. Yeah, and, and we were going we, to lunch, and Ron, you were like, but, "But, but let's just stop right here and get this weird meat. <laughs> There's weird meat on spit on spits." Yeah, was it totally wrong? Was it in Germany? I, I, I think it was Romania. In Romania. Yeah, it was delicious. We, whatever the was, hell it um, was, whatever it was, awesome. we didn't know. We just shoved it in our pie fate pie holes. <laughs> we're just like, eat, eat, and. That yeah. was the trip, uh, and sadly, the uh, we we wanted to stop for Belgian waffles, and right. um, there was no time. So she was like, "You know, they're pretty good at the gas stations in Belgium too." <laughs> <laughs> and I believe it. it. It was. They were I better than any it. any gas station food I've ever had here. Yeah, right? <laughs> they had as uh, you know how you have soda dispensers or whatever. They had baking baked bread dispensers that. Wow. We're baking bread in them without anybody doing anything. <laughs> oh my God. That's insane, that? man. It was its own machine. I, I believe it. Yeah. The machine was making bread. Like, no, it could have caught in fire, and I bet the machine wouldn't know what to do. They'd be like, wait, hold on. <laughs> do you remember the the driver lady? She she spoke she all was, the languages. And she was she, so sweet yeah. and super smart. And uh, yeah. But at one point, we were in, we were driving. In wherever Amsterdam is near there, right? And so I went on TripAdvisor 
to find a restaurant that wasn't like I'm not going to an Applebee's. It's not happening. And <laughs> yeah. uh, so I Thank found you. an Indonesian restaurant. Remember that in the in the van, and I said, "Hey, you guys they have Indonesian food," and yeah. uh, and she said, "Yes, we have very good uh, Indonesian food because of," and then she whispered, "Colonization." <laughs> 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 and I said, um, "Yeah, we have really good slave food uh, because of slavery." <laughs> Because <laughs> poor people have had to make do, and they've made yeah. do it deliciously. Oh my With god, all that's so funny! I remember, it's true, I remember that. That's yeah, because uh, she knew like four languages. She knew German, she knew Dutch, um, and she was right, she was, she was German, Dutch. Right? No, she, she was, was Dutch. Dutch. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah, because right, right. Dutch and uh, colonized Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. And then when my, one of my one of the places I really loved was when we had the um, we went to Poland and the capital of Poland. And Jackie, you went. We were in the mall. You came back with all these pierogies. Oh right! Wow. I, yeah, I, I I went foraging, and they had yeah. fresh pierogies. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love you, Jackie. I know we <laughs> gotta hang out, man. Dude, like honestly, if I was a white woman, I'd be you. <laughs> honestly i'm not even joking like first time i went to toronto uh canada like 10 years ago dude that's wrong like i fucking had so he's never much- had um he never he's never had west indian or caribbean food before so i brought him to all the trinidadian jamaican dominican republic places in toronto he, yeah. yeah in toronto because huge a lot community huge or? caribbean yeah. community there i have missed out I yeah, go and so I went to his hotel room, and he had two queen beds. One bed was dedicated to a spread of food, like a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I remember at one point I was on the bed, and I had like a headboard ledge behind me, and I was putting food like behind, like by my head, <laughs> so I could just like reach over and grab it. That was it. Fire Tuck from Rocket Robin. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so you're foraging for uh, yes. pierogies, uh, right? Right. Now, well, I just, uh, I, you know, I'm I'm from uh, Milwaukee, and there's so many Polish people there, and I was like, oh, they're gonna be yeah. mad at me if I haven't tried whatever, you know. Like, I gotta find some sausage for Ron. I gotta find uh, some pierogies for you know the Shablowskis across the street. <laughs> Kielbasa. Yeah. <laughs> Whaley, what's your food of choice? What's happening over there? Yeah, Whaley, what do you like? Um, um, I mean, there's. I'm in New Hampshire, so there's just like potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> but yep. they do them nice, right? Potatoes. Yeah, they do really, really warm, uh, <laughs> moist potatoes. <laughs> um, <laughs> too, not too many adjectives that come with potatoes. So <laughs> warm, yeah, no, moist, I was trying to think warm, of them. moist, warm, not, moist, not white too many. potatoes, salty, salty. I was hoping. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> salty, you, buttery, peppery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but not too much food in the food situation. Not too much going on. I'm like the I'm in a I'm probably in like a 20 mile radius. The only Asian here, so not a lot of Asian stuff going on. Right. right. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, how about seafood? Like New Hampshire, isn't it on a coast? I don't know a lot about geography, you guys. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's almost there. <laughs> is it? Is it? I, well, I mean, you got to drive to Boston and you'll hit the coast. Yeah, okay. So it, and it's Boston. tiny, right? So, like, you can so. kind of get is. across it real quick. Yeah, it's like you're already yeah. like get 45 some, minutes or something. Some chowder, maybe? Get, hook yourself yeah. up. Yeah, chowder. The- you should go check out the chowder, Whaley. Like, honestly. Yeah, man, I'm going to Boston out. this weekend. So, I'm going to figure, I'm going to get Mexican, Mexican food in Boston. <laughs> Boston's got good food, man. <laughs> yeah. they, Boston uh, does have yeah, good food. Yeah, I was I was shocked they had really good food. I didn't I didn't think it was you know Boston has amazing food. Yeah, it's I was shocked. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I what was shower. your favorite food? Did what did you like overseas when we went? What was what was kind of like a mem- a memorable dish that you enjoyed the most? I loved when we went to uh, when we were in Romania. They picked us up at that airport. Those two guys. Yeah, that didn't. They seemed dodgy as all hell, and they were just like, "We're supposed to bring you right back to what was easily the ugliest uh, barracks and fort ever." It was so incredibly depressing. It looked like it was done in like late Soviet architecture school. (laughs) Like it was just all grim, so grim. And I was like, 
no, no, we, we have to go. We have to have Romanian food before we get to the, to the, to the place. And so we go and we stopped and they had lamb. Wow. Remember that lamb? And, and, and yeah. it was, and, and there was that band singing yes. like a pina colada song or something. Yeah. Like literally it was a cover band of like an older Romanians, a bu- yeah. like a bunch of guys that look like Dracula playing uh, pop songs from the six, from the eighties. <laughs> but the food was really good. And, really and the, good. and when we checked in with the, with the, with the woman who checked Amy and I, and she goes, well, you're lucky because you, there's no, you can't, you're not allowed to leave the base after this. And so I have to say, uh, that I'm so glad that you, that you did it. Uh, but I, well, no, I have, I have to say you shouldn't have done it, but I have to say, I'm really glad you did it because <laughs> uh, the food here is just okay. <laughs> um, I remember we, we, uh, we went to the, because we had that restaurant, we went back, and you love art. You love taking pictures of different architects and also just actually like framed pictures of walls. And you love the art hotel that we stayed in. Oh, the hotel. I Yeah, because I used to do, when when I was traveling doing stand-up comedy, yeah. I and it will happen again, yes. uh, I would do this segment for Instagram called Hotel Art. And essentially, I would just take a picture. And it was, you know, the same nine pictures in every Hampton Inn across America. That's why it was right. funny. And uh, <laughs> in Romania, you were just like, what is it? <laughs> Where is yeah. it? Is, it's a clock in Cambridge. Yeah. And you know what? Out of everyone on the tour, like, uh, J- you have to understand, Jackie has the most energy and we can't keep up with her. She's like running around the place, checking people out, taking pictures. She's giving gifts to all the soldiers. <laughs> I think it was the uh, the video games that your husband it was made. A, but yeah, my husband makes video games. And so uh, a bunch of uh, really nice, like the new Spider-Man and the new God of War fell off the back of a truck, you guys. It was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we brought like uh, 40 video games. So every, every, every base, I'd be like, here you go. And remember that I might have been Romania where the guy was like, they don't like video games. The, the guys don't like video games. And I was like, hey, Grandpa, uh, you're wrong. He's like, no, no, they like working out, man. They like they like doing laps and they like working. I was like, maybe, but I'm not, I'm 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 gonna promise you. They also enjoy God of War, a button masher. They really want to. They're in the army, sh- man. What, what's sure, happening? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they they play a lot of video games on those bases. <laughs> I've seen their kids with their kids yeah. with in, with incredible male physiques. Like honestly, I felt yeah. like I couldn't believe all how young and muscular these guys were. Right, yeah, it got a little sure. got a little dodgy when I was standing a little too close to one of them. I was like, "Back <laughs> off, Grandma! Leave him alone!" <laughs> the dude's like twenty two years old. What are you gonna What are you gonna do? Touch him? Leave him alone! Leave him alone! I, I remember <laughs> Anton saw this guy do bench pressing, and he were like, "Anton, take him out." He's like, "I'm gonna show him what an old man f- can bench." <laughs> <laughs> this guy benched three plates, and the, the other kid was like, "Wow, you're a man!" And he's like, "Yup, this is a man's chest, boy." <laughs> Yeah. How old is Antoine? He's probably 32 30 ish now. Yeah, okay. early thirties, I think. Yeah. yeah. But That's why the braces were so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, own it, man. I mean, I That's you know, funny. if I had a, three years, I'd I'd put some braces on my teeth and together. <laughs> but who um, knows if I got three years? Who's who you, wants to spend that kind of money? <laughs> and and honestly, man, you killed so and you're you have such an amazing style because you are considered an alt comic within the community, but you don't even care about that. You just do your thing, you know? Oh, I, that's weird. That's, yeah. that's so annoying. It also lends some credence to the fact of why fucking helium won't book me. Yeah. Uh, mm. They think I'm an alt comic. I could do, I could do any one nighter. I could do any club you want. You can do both. Like I've never met someone. Fighting I mean, Mar- words, Maria man. can do that. You're, uh, she's also, no. Yeah, man. Mar- Maria doesn't want any part of Maria doesn't want any part of your one nighters. Your no, she, she does like the cities, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. she in an ideal world, it's you know twelve hundred people that came to see Maria Bamford. That's right. And uh, I mean, that's what we. I mean, that's lovely. Who doesn't want to be carried off stage like as a hero? Yeah. But um, <laughs> but I'm also I need to do a room of two twenty and pay my rent. Oh yeah, right. but you do the road. Um, yeah. A lot of comics that. Also, are 
considered an alt or just more of a city type of comedian. You know, there's some like the road comics have a certain style and people in the city have a certain style where you kind of do both. You know, you you take your material and make it adjustable for anybody of any kind of walk of life to digest. Thank you. You know, and, and, and a lot of people, a lot of comics that are very original and very distinct don't do that, you know, and they should because I think they would connect with people they didn't think they could have overseas, don't you think? I do. I do think just because I yeah. think that there's, there's er, everybody smarter than you think. Everybody right. gets cable and always has mm. <laughs> everybody, you know, it's going to be fine. They'll get the joke. And if they don't add a line. Exactly. And then they um, will. Why do you think a lot of people don't want to travel like that? I guess it's hard to. Right. It's a grind. I mean, it's a grind. I, I, cause before COVID, I, I gave you all the contacts for the, the Asia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Cambodia that, that Justin and I play all Myanmar and India. We do that every year. Oh, that's so, so cool. I, I was like, you know what? I got to give all this info to her cause I know you do well. But if this goes through, would love to have you taken on a few of the countries you haven't been, been to before. Right. I, I've only, uh, I did, it was, everything's two years ago now. Absolutely yeah. every, uh, it's, uh, so, Probably two years ago, I did the Hanoi room. Oh, you yeah. did Hanoi too? Ha, ha Ha Hanoi? Yeah. Yeah, Ha Ha, ha Hanoi. Hanoi. And I got a free yeah. t-shirt. And we were across the street from that lake that uh, What's-His-Face uh, crashed into with his fourth airplane. Oh, my God. M- McCain. <laughs> M- McCain crashed his fourth airplane in there. And they're thinking about building a... Uh, a he, the, the guy told me, he said, we're thinking about building a statue with two guys pulling him out. And I said, you know, he was the bad guy. <laughs> what are you doing? A statue of John McCain in Vietnam? <laughs> is it that oh, lake? By the way, that, everybody, uh, this is Jackie Sanchez. Oh, yeah. Jackie Jackie Sanchez. Sanchez. Oh, Jackie. What's up? She's Hello, such Jackie a funny uh, comedian. I've, uh, we've worked at her a couple of times, and I've seen her stuff online. And you know our friend Jimmy Earl, right? Um, Me? Jimmy said, Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy said uh, he he's he's worked with you, and and uh, you guys he said you're hilarious. So Hi, I like your you name, Jackie. Yeah, you have <laughs> yeah. a good one too. So Where did you just, did you just come from? A show? Where are you just are you do, are you uh, guys are fully no. open now? Yeah, we're fully open. There's a bunch of shows tonight, uh, but mostly open mics. I'm trying not to to go out too too often, and for you know bars and catching COVID is is, is not my idea of fun. So if the stage time is worth it, I'm I'm definitely going out, but. No empty bars for me, especially St. Patrick's Day. I'm good. Oh yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah, see, yeah. yeah. How how irritating would it be if I died of COVID here in the, like the fucking eleventh <laughs> hour? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right before it opens up. Yeah. Right before, and you did, and everybody that did comedy is fine. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Kayshawn stays home, gets COVID by opening the window to fucking air out her her, her kitchen, and she gets right. it. Right, I ran into some idiot, yeah. and uh, so I I got the I got the first shot. You guys get the shot. I'm, I'm getting my- it eventually. Uh, here I, in in I'm in Vegas right now doing the LA Comedy Club. If you give your pay stub, they can give you a shot. They just have to pr- you have to prove you work in Vegas. Oh wow! Yeah, so I'm gonna try to get that on Monday. Do you do you, do? You, are you still touring? So you're not doing any comedy whatsoever besides online, Jackie Kasian. Uh, Jackie Kasian is doing a Zoom stand up five nights a week. Wow! Like a crazy. Wow. Uh, I'm doing a lot of space work, you guys. You should see the way this thing rolls. Do you also have a creative. podcast with with um, Maria Bamford, or is it is it uh, both of you doing it once a week or something? I thought Wait. you had a podcast with Maria. No, I have one with Lori Kilmartin. That's who's right. Who's a comic yeah. who oh, writes for Conan. Lori. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And that, uh, I was telling her uh, the other night about um, some Carol Burnett sketch where mm-hmm. it's Tim Conway and Harvey Corman are in a bar. Harvey Corman has asked Tim Conway to come out and hit on women. And Tim Conway says, women don't like me. And Harvey Corman's like, you, you're a good looking guy. Why? How could it be? And then some woman comes in and Tim Conway literally jumps on this woman and tries to molest her. Oh and Harvey P- Carmen, uh, Corman pulls him off and Tim Conway sits down in dead pants. See, they don't like me. And so, it, <laughs> and it escalates like that for like, it's a, you know, two minute sketch or whatever. But the way I explained it to Kill Martin this week was I said that the woman, 
uh, yeah, the guy, ju- uh, Tim Conway, jumps on her and she beats him off. <laughs> and Lori's <laughs> like, somebody beat somebody off on the Carol. B-. And I was like, what just happened? <laughs> With, and nobody even uses that term. Where, where are you working? And uh, so she's very much a road comic, too. Oh, that was a great show when I was growing up. I loved the, the Carol Burnett show. Uh, amazing. She was. Um, yeah, the Simpsons came from there. Oh, really? No, K- 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 Simpsons came from um, um, yeah. Tracy Ullman. Oh, yeah, Tracy Ullman. Right. Oh, okay. Tracy Ullman. Yeah, that's right. My Tracy bad. Tracy Ullman. Yeah. Carol um, Burnett was uh, before, the, like, uh, late 60s, early 60s. 70s. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. You got that mix up there. <laughs> no worries. Um, one of my favorite jokes you do is about how <laughs> you had to be taught how to be have friends by your teacher. Oh, right. That's was that me. a true story? Oh, that's a true story. Uh, it's you- pretty true. I mean, the thing is, is it's it's I cleaned it up. Obviously, you want to you want to tighten up a story yeah. where where you're not really. The, so the the coach essentially, I w- was going out for the basketball team. And I was reading a book as I did laps to try out for the basketball team. And the coach came over and she was like, what? No running and reading. What are you doing? And uh, and I and she said, pick someone from the team to run with. And I said, no one will run with me. I don't have any friends. I was like 14. And she goes, you don't have any friends? And then she literally, I do remember she literally said to me, are you friendly? <laughs> no. No, no, I was not. <laughs> and she described how to be friendly, which was just start talking to people. Mumbling will be fine. You'll get acquaintances. <laughs> <laughs> It'll move forward from there. Uh, where where are you, Jackie Sanchez? You're in Florida? Yeah, I'm in West Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, that's so- southeast, southwest? Yeah, southeast Florida. Southeast. Just like, above Miami, yeah. Okay. And, and so the clubs are open and... Yeah, everything is open. It, it's been open, honestly, for a couple months now. Uh, just everyone didn't start, like, going out for real up until the last two months. And now it, it's really, there's, like, open mics every night, probably, like, four open mics a night. And then wow. book shows basically every weekend, you know? So How it, it many hasn't new stopped. comics have, lived, have moved to the city, though, or to the estate? So many, like, almost too much at this point. There's, I run an open mic uh, on Tuesdays. And we have about like 30 to 40 comics in like this tiny dive bar trying to get five minutes. And it goes on for three to four hours. Wow. And, but they just want the stage time. Everyone just wants to work now. So, I mean, I'm not complaining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's but my it's friend. Hard to like, sorry, Car- go ahead. Well, Car- you, Ron, do you know Carmen Morales? Justin, you guys know? Uh, uh, I don't know. She's, you know a, Carmen? she's from, she, she's oh, in Orlando. So. She's a, a Florida but she lived in LA for a couple of years and um but she's up in Orlando and she's like everything's open but she's mm-hmm. she's like I got to get vaccinated before I head out Yeah, again. it's wild. It's yeah. everyone's getting all my friends and all the comics around me have already gotten covid. I luckily have not. I mean, I'm safe, but I do go out and I risk it for sure, so I'm very surprised I have not. And I've been directly exposed. I don't know how many fucking times at this point, you know. And I've been lucky enough to not have gotten it, but it's it's everywhere, everywhere. Like everyone's getting it. It's at every show really? you find out someone had it, so everyone has to go get tested. That you know, touch that mic, and and it kind of becomes a disaster. But they're desperate. They just want to get out. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's lonely yeah. times, but mm-hmm. it's crazy. it is. What what do you like? Even in in Vegas, most of the comments had COVID twice already. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of them. <laughs> you know, are, are done. You know, they're like, yeah, give me, I'm, I'm good for a third. And this one guy said he got it in March and he, and this is the last time I, I was at this club actually a week before March. So we're performing together again. And I, I hadn't seen him since last February. And I go, Oh my God, Willie, I haven't seen you in such a long time. And he's like, yeah, I had COVID when you saw me the day after and it was in the hospital when he's over 60 and oh, he, he had recovered. hospital COVID? Yeah. Oh. And he came out with, um, the, he has no more sense of smell or taste for the rest of his life. Oh, that's what I'm afraid of. And here's the sad part. He's a foodie like me. Oh. Uh, yeah. But he's not an idiot. Uh, uh, or you're a, not an idiot like him. Was, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know who that guy is. Yeah, that guy. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <Was> he, uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. But he's <laughs> and I was like, I think I'm smarter, Jackie. <laughs> was no, I wear the mask. And, and, you know, now the, the club is, what, it's only 30%. And um, you, it, it's literally 12 feet away from the stage. There's four different mics in case one doesn't work and three for the comedians. And I literally just go down to the club. There's 30 people at the most and then leave right after. I just don't want to hang out right now until I get the shot. And, uh, you know, it's just so, you know, like at this stage right now, why blow it? We've waited this long. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Just take the damn shot if you can. Um, What do you do to make when the beginning of the COVID happened? How much of a change? What did what affected you the most? Obviously, we can't travel, Kayshawn. But what did you do? to make it a little bit more easier a mental state well we we have this tiny room now uh so we added we were gonna try to make like a our garage into like a mother-in-law for my mother-in-law right. but it was too expensive <laughs> um so we just put this tiny room here and so there's a th- essentially my husband and i he can work in we, we have three places to work which is like almost two, at least one more than most people have in their, in their houses, you know, or their apartments. So you, we could be in the living room. We could be in, we have a, we have a two bedroom, 966 square foot house that he bought. And then I married him, you guys. (laughs) And so now it's half mine. Um, (laughs) And uh, he, he's great. But uh, so we have like this and this tiny garage room and then uh, the, the guest room and then the living room for three different places. Cause he's, he's always, he's running games and he, and he uses like, he like we have this, this bendy thing mm. that he, like he'll play test a game, like a paper prototype. And so he'll put like this camera here and then there'll be another camera. It's, it's, it's a trip. So he's still creating games for Nintendo or sorry for PlayStation at home. No, no, he hasn't worked for PlayStation since uh, for a long time. Those oh, okay. he just knows guys who still work at PlayStation and right, at right. Sony. So, um, <clears throat> the, but what he's he's teaching he teaches game design at a tech college, and then he also works on like because he went from Sony PlayStation to TH, THQ, I think it was. They made uh, like THQ. Nintendo and Wii kind of games, right. and and then he was now he's making games for cell phones. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah, because I, 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 when you, when we were on tour, he, um, you had the stack of the games. I didn't know he was, he, at that time, he was still working. Was he still working for PlayStation? No, no, or? no. He went for play, he went for PlayStation to Disney for three years. Okay. And then he went to THQ for two years. Then they went, uh, went belly up and then he went independent. And so, and then like th- four years ago, he said that now he wa- doesn't even want to make video games anymore. He wants to make board games. Right. And then we stared at each other and he went, yes, <laughs> the lucrative world of board games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, did you meet him when you were a comedian or before? Or, yeah. You met him like at a show or did? No, no. Did online dating. A friend? I, don't, I don't remember. I don't have any social skills. So oh, yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> drop, <laughs> drop down menu Mumbling. option. Yeah, mumbling. It's yeah. but that's what I like about online dating is because when you first meet, you literally look at somebody and go, your initial thing is, would I make out with that? Yeah, yeah. And then you move <laughs> forward from there, right? <laughs> it's that's the most true. successful I've ever been with men in my life. <laughs> Will I make out with that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's great. I'm married now for like how, how many years? Since 26, 2006. Oh, Jesus. Right. So um, almost 15 years. So we are a success story. And that's, that's incredible. <laughs> I've recently taken up what I'm calling affection plagi- plagiarism because he's better at it than I am. So when right. he does something nice for me later in the day, I'll think, I bet you he would like it if I did that for him. Uh, and then <laughs> just essentially it's just uh, like baby steps on me learning how to be thoughtful so uh, <laughs> don't be a monster Cation. <laughs> um, he, and does, does he cook as well because um, I heard that you make a killer um, chicken bread from, from Amy <laughs> oh chicken bread he last yeah. night made tarragon chicken popover Oh, uh, I love all roast chicken. No. I don't know. I don't know what you guys. We. Uh, oh, one of our neighbors has put a fryer later in their front yard and is selling Peruvian chicken. 
Cool. And so oh, we, that's we, bomb. I've had that. It was so good. And wow. they make this incredibly hot um, coleslaw that goes with it. Yeah. And these plantain chips that have nothing on them at all, but you need them because the coleslaw is ridiculously hot. <laughs> and, uh, but they, wow. but it's just like two blocks away. Their front yard is essentially a restaurant. It's just a pop-up restaurant. And, uh, the other day he was like, Hey, I'm going to go get lunch from there. And I said, yeah, yeah, why don't you? And so he brought home two, two, it was like a leg and thigh fried chicken with <laughs> coleslaw and plantains. And it was 13 bucks each. That's where, it. Where is this? In Los in Angeles on, on Satikoy. Yeah. Uh, wow. It's on Satikoy, right out of my Sepulveda and Kester. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Satikoy, yeah. Uh, yeah, the the um yeah so that that's like a Peruvian restaurant that does a pop up. Like, no, it's uh, a Peruvian no, family. It's just the family, okay, right? It's the, a family that just sells food in front of their house. In LA, and you're allowed to do that now, right? There's no I, restrictions I mean, on people cooking on no. the streets. I mean, they'll arrest you for selling dirty dogs after the club in on Hollywood well, Boulevard. Uh, Those but, bacon but they're, hot dogs. They, yeah, but they're. Uh, all you need is uh, a push cart from a grocery store, a yeah. propane gas tank, and a cookie sheet. And right. you are in business, my friend, yeah. at 2 a.m. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Which is, I think, at, but I think actually the police have been pretty lax in the last year just because they oh, know okay. everybody's broke. And nice. uh, they're like, do whatever you got to do to make 100 yeah. bucks a day so that, uh, you know, because they're so... I'm doing this bit about how, because I watched this thing on Netflix called, have you guys seen, ooh, you guys would like this actually, uh, Flavorful Origins. It's a, yes. it's a docu-series, uh, about, set three different seasons in China, different provinces in mainland China, each episode 10 to 13 minutes, beautifully shot. And it's about the food in these weird little rural towns in yeah. China. So there's, you know. That's and, my dream. I love to do th- something like that. It was, and it's so good. And but every four episodes, and I, I don't fear any food. But every four episodes, it's clearly, uh, food like what we were talking about before, where yeah. it's like, yeah, on the street. They're right. It's it's, it's and it, what it did was it made me realize that every country and every culture has had rich people say to poor people, "You get nothing." And then somebody's grandmother has to turn this pen into something delicious. So, <laughs> yeah. and, and then there's some sort, of, and then they turn it, the, then they, and then their their descendants have it at festivals. Wow! And I believe that their ancestors are rolling over in their graves, going, "Just eat the goat. What are you doing? Why are you eating the bile from the stomach of the goat? We did that because we had to." Yes, you have well, a whole Armenian, goat. Your background yeah. is Armenian, so your parents used would cook also goats and a lot of barbecue stuff, right? Oh yeah, yeah. My grandmother uh, used to because in in Armenia or Turkey, which is where she was from initially before uh, the uh, um, <laughs> they they it was grape leaves, and yeah. they were like, you don't get any grapes, you have to eat the grape leaves. And somebody's grandmother was like, boil the grape leaf wrap whatever food you could find in the grape leaf and then a hundred years later church 26 bucks a plate for Bill <laughs> <laughs> so. um, do, wait, are you actually working in that bit have you tried it yet online yeah yeah just all online because I, I i was supposed to do my new album last year right twice we re- we we scheduled it to be recorded and twice it had to be pushed and so so would you actually do a recording on zoom or is it going to be a live no there was uh, a guy who did was it Nori Davis? Who was the one who put out a Zoom album? Oh, man. It was pretty gutsy stuff. Yeah. I'm not sure who did that Zoom album. Do you, does anybody know? No. I know it's not like, Nori? It, it might have been. I think yeah. it was Nori. I, it might have been Nori Davis because he was on my podcast plugging it. But you would want to practice this live with people rather than Zoom I got, then. Yeah, I got to do like three or four weekends before, before yeah. I record just to get, because the timing is different on Zoom. 100%. You could stall a bit. Yeah, because it, it's it's sort of like playing like a giant theater where you got to wait for the premise to hit the back wall and roll yes. back. And the same with the right. punchline. Yeah. And and that's true. And so you can't really practice live. So when I was talking to Dean Edwards, who did the, the Netflix special with Godfrey and Tiffany Haddish, he said they were all given three weeks on the road in places where they could practice it because they, nobody could do it live. They're like, well, we can't just do it right now. Yeah. You got to go through some stuff. Even with me, before you, f- five months out, it took me a month to get back to 
90 percent rhythm riffing or whatever like the just the quickness of your brain to go on to the next subject it wasn't there you know are you um, guys all doing zoom shows yeah more or less I mean, <laughs> pretty much i've done yeah. a few with uh just a lot with justin a couple with jackie and um on my own uh i mean when you It'd be nerve wracking if you it would have to do it. Like, could you do it another Conan right now? Like, like you'd have to. I could. I actually sent I sent a ten minute uh, Zoom set to JP Buck at Conan. Nice. Just because, and by the way, no response. Hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if any of you guys want, I have a Sunday Zoom show. If you want a set, it's you know. Oh, I'd love to. We'll it's do, we'll ten do. minutes, fifteen about fifteen dollars. Dude, and I'm so every, down. It's and it's yeah. afternoon LA time, so like this weekend yeah. it's at one PM. That'd be great. And I'd love to. That's yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I I was making okay money, and then I just kept adding more and more comics to the bill because I got lonely. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and plus the same twenty to seventy people have been watching me work on this hour for the last eleven months. I'd they love are, to be on it. The, you're you're totally just Evie. Uh, okay. It's just and pass it on to these guys. And um, do you, do you still get nervous doing any shows? Like I mean, when you did Conan, was that nerve wracking for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you terrifying. couldn't sleep a day before or so. Like I hear people well, can't it, sleep. It, I, I, I sleep like the big cats, so I didn't have a problem with sleeping. Right. Yeah. But I just, I, I get a little, I get a little twitchy, and then I remind myself that stand up comedy is supposed to be fun. And here's the other trick: is that once you go out on any stage, you do the first, your first line, then mm-hmm. it's just stand up comedy. Right. I have to remember that. What happened to your audio, your earpiece at the cone, the, fir- the second Conan taping? Oh, it fell off my. Yeah, my, the I, laugh I was pack watching. I was off. laughing, but I'm like, was that a? They kept it. Was it. Not re- that yeah. was the weird thing. It was because it was pre-taped. My so I had a mic. They had a backup lavalier thing, and the and the battery pack was attached to my pants, and it fell off, and it just was. There was somebody. It felt like somebody was tapping my leg during the bit. <laughs> And I just, so what I did was I finished the bit, I paused so that they could cut it because I knew that it was, and I looked down and it was, I was like, what the hell is this? And I, <laughs> and so I just rolled it up and jammed it down the back of my pants <laughs> and then I gave it another beat and then I finished the set. And my, actually my husband told me I was much more relaxed after that happened. Really? The first half <laughs> the of the happened. set. Yeah. It, what's cool is you really... You you took it so well, and it almost looked like that was too natural. Was it was it set up? But you did just just made a joke out of it really quickly. Right. Well, I was. Uh, well, you know, you know, when you're on stage and something weird happens, you're kind of embarrassed. Yeah. So you kind of riff off of it, and that's what I did. And I figured that they would cut all of it. And when I went back into the green room afterwards, one of the the, the sound guy came up, and he was. I was like, so. I hope I made it clean enough so you could cut it. And he looked at me and goes, oh, we're keeping it. It's funny. <laughs> and I was like, it's, I signed the thing. It's yours. Do uh, which, you one, which of the Conans did you like the best and worst? I did it three times. Right. And he's moving to HBO. Oh, wow. And he's only wow. got a half an hour. So I don't know if he's still going to do stand-ups. Oh, man. Wow. But, he's moving, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In was, June. Uh, which one? Which one of the performances that you did did you like the best? I think I liked that one. Yeah. Um, the the, you know, there are three six seven minute sets, and so I'm 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 trying to cut clips and put them on TikTok and Instagram Reels so let's see if anyone gives a shit. And uh, everyone's been very <laughs> polite. Uh, <laughs> so, but the the. You know, you got to find someone who can rip it off of YouTube. And then I, the only way I know how to edit video is on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by, by sliding it. Right. <laughs> and then there's, there's an app called Headliner app yeah. that will caption it for you. Yeah. And they'll oh, do nice. a certain yeah. amount for Ronnie, free. do you use, I mean, Whaley, do you it use It makes that? like an audiogram too, if you want. I use V.io. It's oh, automa- okay. automated uh, subtitles. Oh, you know what? I I just figured I just found out about that today, so I should be what? using that instead of typing it all myself. Oh God, it's cheaper. Than <laughs> that, I mean, it's free. It's a lot cheaper. Justin, Jackie, you what? Should... Yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to ask you what what's it, what is an audiogram? 
Oh, it's like uh, Headliner does this thing where you can um, take your audio and it and it makes like uh, it converts it to a video file. So and it'll show like the like the wavelengths of you talking, like the sound wavelengths. Oh, it's just should... a, the wave file. Yeah. Uh, no, like you know when you look at a it's sound an and you see the form. animated wave. Yeah, animated waveform. And let's say you have like a stand up bit or like a clip from a podcast. You can put that into like a headliner or something and they'll, they'll turn it, they call it an audiogram. So it takes, takes your sound clip and turns to a video file. So you can put it on Instagram or YouTube or, YouTube or, whatever. or whatever. Yeah. I see. And I'll put the name and all that stuff. Uh, okay. My, yeah. Cause my, my audio guy um, just essentially Libsyn will just put the slug. And then it'll just play in the background, but there's no waveform. Yeah, it yeah. Just, so you, and and but it, it populates it right to my YouTube page. So right. Yeah, so you're you always do you're always pu- pushing stuff out. Like, do you find that draining? Because that's it's it's really draining just constantly putting stuff on social media these days. Or yes. do you actually have a good time doing it? No, 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 not. <laughs> <laughs> it's exhausting. Matter of fact, yeah, I've taken I've taken to just follow people back. Anyone who says anything negative on my TikTok, I follow them back to their profile and block them. I'm like, hey, you get nothing. You get nothing from me. <laughs> um, wait, so we, when did you move to L.A.? 97, I think. Oh, man. Cause 96, it, yeah, because even like Amy used I'm to say. I'm 100 you, 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 years old. Yeah. I know. I love your first line where you go, I open for the Iroquois. I, I can't remember what it was. Hester it Iroquois? Brin? Oh, yeah, the Iroquois. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. it was. Uh, she had a tight five of the Iroquois. <laughs> yeah. Hester Brin. Uh, and what is your what is your your favorite club in LA now or before the COVID, anyways? Well, I I do. It's it's the Improv and the and Flappers right. are the ones that'll book me, and and pretty much and Flappers is kind of great because uh, I can kind of strong arm my way onto any show. Nice. But here in COVID, they have uh, taken advantage of that generosity, and uh, and I do free shows for them a lot. Oh, nice. So yeah. Well, but, I mean, it, isn't that isn't that flappers in general? I, I feel like that's oh their yeah, they're not paying a lot of people. Yeah, business model <laughs> yeah. wise, uh, they're like, do you do you like meatloaf? We're making meatloaf. <laughs> Dude, like, didn't, they, didn't flappers take donations to build a bathroom in the green room? Wasn't Jeff that, Garland it? paid for that, and I have always wanted to put a put a plaque above it that says the Jeff Garland Memorial Toilet because <laughs> 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 I mean, he didn't want to use the public toilet. Oh really? yeah, I didn't know he, he paid yeah, for it. Wow. Yeah, he, supposedly he just paid for it. I remember they were putting out stuff for like we're taking donations for this for all bathroom. kind. They're willing to take. Oh, they're not above taking donations. And yeah. right when the COVID started, they were selling off all their stuff as groceries. Oh, what? I remember that. Yeah, their whole uh, yeah. their whole kitchen, the whole kitchen, the whole kitchen. Uh, like I got yeah. toilet paper and rice and uh, yeah. some flour and sugar, and yeah. uh, just to be supportive. <laughs> Right, right. Do you do yeah. mostly like two weeks in the city and two weeks out? This is like before we did the yeah. COVID shit. Yeah. Was it more like that? And you were you were pretty much a road comic slash city comic. You're like doing two at the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's yeah. necessary? Is it obviously money, but do you think it helps comedians able uh, able to kind of universalize their material when you do that? Because if you do say it too much in the city, you don't know if somebody in the Midwest will get it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and and if you do the road so much, you can't. You, I mean, especially if you if you live on the road. I used to a feature what I featured for like people on the road. I would. I remember I met this one guy who was like, he insisted on staying squeaky clean because he wanted to do TV one time. You know, mm-hmm. eventually, right? It was the nineties, right. and uh, so, but he his stuff was so boring because he never went home. He never interacted <laughs> yeah. with anyone except for the clubs. Yeah. And then he watched TV. Right? So he drank and partied with the club people and then he watched a lot of television and that's what his stand up had to be about because you write about what you know. You right. And I was, I was like, well, you should go talk to your mom or somebody. <laughs> like <laughs> get like a a sibling joke or some damn thing. <laughs> That's true because I it, it's I kind of equate it to being even a fashion designer. There's no need, there's only so much influence you can get by being in the in the sticks. Like you have to kind of be in the city where there's a lot of people you see wearing different types of clothing, and you can now come up with your own ideas. Right, and the other thing is if you do the road and you decide not to be uh, 
clean. Then all you all the jokes you do are are pretty much about getting laid, and it's real. It's super dirty. Yeah, uh, and you could tell. Have you ever done cruises before? I've done only one cruise, and it was a nerd cruise. <laughs> oh, <a> nerd nice. cruise. <laughs> Very uh, different. How did, what? what was it called? How'd you get into that? How, how'd you get hired? The Joko for that? Cruise, because I'm a because I'm a because I'm a, a nerd. I have a podcast called The Dork Forest. That's right. Uh, so, wow. so the Joko Cruise was Jonathan Colton and Amy Mann and 1,700 board game dorks. Holy shit! That must uh, you must be their god. Uh, Andy Ashcraft, my fella. Uh, was in a seventh heaven. And matter of fact, they didn't book me the third year. And he was like, we could just go. And I was like, it's a terrible precedent. Uh, <laughs> we are not going to pay $5,000 to go hang out with these people because they will ask me to do a set and I will say yes. <laughs> yes. Because I need the stage time. Right? You love it. Like, remember that time we bit, we, I think it was Romania where we had, to, we took the uh, Blackhawks and you enjoyed that. The turkey. Blackhawks. That was Turkey. Was that Turkey. Yeah, and then we, we went to the smaller base where a lot of the snipers uh, were were training, and, and we did it in the Tur- cafeteria. It was, for like- it, was, it was a lot of Turkish soldiers, which were I was like, my grandmother would have wanted me to take them out, but uh, <laughs> I was like, nope, we're just gonna we're just gonna be very polite. But you're uh, gung ho. You you don't you don't mind doing any any of the shows. We we did the cafeteria, like we had great theater shows. But then you're like, no, let's do the cafeteria. We were given the option, and you're like, no, let's just do it. It's like f- yeah. three forty people. Let's have a good time. So you in, generally enjoy doing it, then. Yeah, don't you? I do, but there's some crowds I don't like doing, you know. And sometimes I I, I go there and I'm like, well, I guess this is more of a paycheck, or at least I'll try to make myself happy. But you know, there's certain fans that I do, or certain crowds. You get off, right, get on, and within the second joke, you're like, I like them. I love yeah. these people. Yeah. Well, think it's like, the right type of laugh. Like Jackie Sanchez grinding it out, uh, holding an open mic. That's know, Desperado Jackie. needing some- three hours. I know. How does that, okay, <laughs> when you do that for three hours and you're hosting, obviously, right? And uh, mm-hmm. do you get to practice in between? Because you know it's already a three hour show. Not not exactly because it's so many and I'm I try to keep it going fast. I don't really like to talk to much like to people, so I so I would kind of keep it short. But I do I do transitions between. But it's almost it's just like working on my quick work really quick and like okay, make a quick joke about them, bring up the next one, whatever. So I work on that. But when I do a set in the beginning, no one listens to me. So I don't get to actually like work on my set, just the shit in between. You so know? you're working on being comfortable no matter what the circumstances. Yeah, sh- kind of. You should put your set in the middle. That's what hey. I thought about doing, <laughs> just going up and starting it and then just randomly whenever I feel like the crowd is good, just start doing a set in between. Yeah, get your standing ovation in the middle and yeah. then <laughs> well, t- let everybody and- try to follow it. I, seriously, <laughs> the amount of work you're putting in, you deserve what can what is probably... D- Arguably, not even the sweet spot. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, yeah. The, the hard, part, the good thing about being a host, and I've ha- haven't hosted as much as I wanted to. You do get better because you're doing three jobs. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're opening the show, you're bringing up it, and you're actually you still have to close it in a weird way, like make sure everybody's there to see the last person. Do you do you find now a lot of people hate you because they're like, oh, you didn't put me on last week, or they're pretty cool in in Florida. <laughs> Uh, there, it's a mix. It's definitely a mix of it. There's a lot of uh, newer comics who feel very much entitled um, and get angry. There's a lot of people who also get mad if I like pre-sign up people who text me like, "Hey, I'm you know I got another mic. Can you get me on in the top five? Then I get people. No one's ever happy. You don't make anyone happy. And I do the mic for the comics. You know, it's obviously not really for me. Right. Uh, it's just because that was like, well, it's a great spot, great room. It's, I mean, it's a it's like a Irish Australian bar so like last night was crazy but like otherwise it's a pretty great little spot a nice little indoor outdoor vibe so I was like I'll, I'll do it even if I don't really get much out of it so you, they, you're getting a lot out of it because you're you it makes yeah. you so much more tougher and funnier because you yeah. are not f- fearful as fearful you know Sometimes, um when yeah. when when because you do that a lot like um most of the comics in I guess in Florida the they're very friendly. I've noticed like a lot of them, but the, the, I guess the new guys are coming in and new people, there must be some head in, in the city now. Yeah. Just because of the it's, fact I that mean, it's, it's overpopulated. 
It's a little weird uh, occasionally, but yeah, it's definitely overpopulated. And a lot of comics started during like the pandemic when not like the vet comics were going out. Like the older comics and seasoned comics weren't going out for a while. They were being smart and staying in. They weren't that desperate for the stage time. But all the new faces are just out every night at all these mics. So then they finally see the older comics and they're, they kind of have an attitude about it. But it's like you because you guys were out now during the dangerous time and now people are coming out, they feel like there's they've maybe been working harder and they don't even know who some people are. And I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. be careful. That's so and so, you know, like you don't you don't know who anyone is who's been around for 10, 15 years, you know, mm-hmm. and is like a head comic here, but they don't really have a clue. What's with the what's with the uh, younger people you're saying that have entitlement? Like, is that a thing now? Is that like because I don't I don't remember that of being I, I remember scared comedians. That's yes, and it's weird. I mean, I only started five years ago, so I'm still pretty new myself. Uh, but even when I started, it was a lot different. I think, uh, and everyone starting wasn't so like excited. I think everyone's just like right now. If they're starting now, they're getting a lot of attention because everyone just wants to go out and have fun. So like a few new comics start, and just everyone's out supporting them and their friends and their coworkers, whatever. And then it's just kind of gassing themselves up in an odd way, and then they feel more entitled, I guess, because they've got a bigger fan base, but that does fade, as we know, pretty quick, right. you know? Okay, well, you know what? We're going to ask some random questions to both of you, and it has nothing to do, it could have something to do with Kami or not. If you guys are cool with that, this is our last pretty much ending part of this show, but thank you both of you for also coming down. I, I appreciate it. And um, I'm going to just start with, for, for both of you, I'll start with Jackie Kajan. Your top three favorite foods. Oh God! Uh, yeah. Roast chicken. Okay. Baked chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, chicken soup. <laughs> it's, all, it's just the leftovers. <laughs> and chicken feet. <laughs> In the soup, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Jackie Sanchez. Uh, buffalo chicken is wow. uh, my, my favorite food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do love chicken. Uh, I don't eat much else. I think that's it. Buffalo Are you serious? Chicken. Yeah, <laughs> oh, butter no. noodles and Parmesan cheese. Oh, that's, that's a weird not favorite bad. of mine. That yeah. Sounds delicious as well. Okay, uh, yeah. uh, one or t- one or two, three songs that you are. It's in your playlist right now that. You could be embarrassed of some of the stuff that we put on our playlist. You don't want people to know, but what are the ones that you don't, you're kind of like, is your guilty pleasure? Jackie K. Sean. Why me first? Because this is not going to be cool, but this is, it'll be easier to follow. Uh, I have been nonstop for the last 11 months listening to the soundtrack to Frozen 2. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> The Olaf song where um, he sings about uh, this is all makes perfect sense is uh, is in my head. I also enjoy uh, oh God. Uh, an album from too long ago uh, called um, the Sarah Barillis or whatever her name is. Okay. And it's yeah. called yeah. I Like uh, yeah. Brave. I like that. That's a nice song. Oh, nice. And then um, um, I think. Oh, uh, I, I, the last album I bought was the orchestrated pop songs from Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you next done by a, 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 a violin quartet. Okay. I'll do mine. Here, this is what is in my, I, I'm not even embarrassed of it. Um, the, uh, Terminator soundtrack, um, <laughs> right. Okay. Um, there's a song that Maxwell used to sing called This Woman's Work that I realized was an original 80s song from a woman named Kate Bush, right? Yeah. And that was amazing. And the third one is um, the uh, uh, Rocky soundtrack. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, because sometimes I need Getting that music strong, to make yeah. me happy. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jackie Sanchez. I'm trying to think of lies right now because uh, I think my answers are the worst <laughs> by far. Uh, I, I'm 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 going to be honest. I'm listening to a lot of Cardi B. I'm, oh I'm 26. Oh, cool. Mm. Okay, so that's mm. that's she's awesome. what we're doing. She's I like Megan The Stallion better. I like her lyrics a little more. Cardi's are just kind of vulgar. Megan's are like poetry, you know. Like there mm-hmm. there's some some gems in hers. So I do like uh, Megan The Stallion. 
and Justin Bieber. I'm sorry. He's hey, putting out a lot of good new stuff, though, if you check it out. It's very- I'm into what's his your- old stuff when he was like 14. I swear. What's your yeah. favorite <laughs> line in Megan the Stallion? What's your favorite Megan the Stallion line right now? My fa- I have a joke about it. Uh, she says, switch my wig, make him feel like he cheated. <laughs> and that just got me when i heard that i was like why because you know obviously we're not, i'm not rocking wigs uh so but yeah I, I like that line that's probably my favorite by her for sure there's the, the the pop the pop songs have some of the greatest jokes and yeah lines. yes they do and people don't hear it but they're good they're good Janelle Monet, like probably eight years ago or whatever it was, I loved it. Just in the middle of the song, she yelled, get off my areola. <laughs> and I was like, this is the best. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> That's what, oh did, is, that, is that her baby, her kid? I don't know. I was thinking like <laughs> her baby was sucking her suckling. <laughs> no, no, it's get off my, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a metaphor, right. Ron. A, it's a, it's a <laughs> <laughs> I can't take you sometimes. She, she, you know what's? I love how you, you, you make me feel so stupid in a very funny way. I love that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yet you are not. You're very smart. Oh, you're sweetheart. Um, here's uh, any other questions, but here's my my final question to both you two. Your favorite? I, I don't want to say comedian, but somebody that made you love comedy and love makes you love comedy. Uh, Jackie Sanchez. Oh man, um, I, I'm always nervous to say mine now, but it I, it was Louis C.K. I'm gonna still say Louis C.K. All right, be, that's great. I'm gonna that's be fine. confident uh, in comedic Same. style. I that was big for me. Uh, I watched a lot of him when I was younger, and I didn't really get it, but I was like, oh, I, I just liked how he talked, and so that got me into stand up a lot. That's His fine. Mine's Bill Cosby. The- no, I'm joking. My my oh, favorite my was uh, was definitely Chris Rock, and that's who. Uh, I that made me go just do it and be fearless. That's I just needed to see that one bring the pain when I because I was into comedy since I was a kid, slightly so and I saw that. I'm like, you could do that, you know. And it yeah. it wasn't that I was do the same material. I just was now gonna go up and go. Let me just see if I'm be strong enough to go up. That was mine. Uh, Jackie Kashan, what's your who's your influence? Um. Well, the weird thing is is. I mean, the cool thing about both of those and the great comics, right? They just, they're, you just hear them talk about like Louis CK brought up topics that you were like, what the hell, man, Mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to dive down this rabbit hole, which is what was so heartbreaking when he didn't Mm -hmm. fucking figure out, you know, he just wanted to do stand up. I get it. Oh, I think we all get it. Uh, But the, uh, um, but I did love the, the topics that were just gutsy stuff, you know, it's just Mm -hmm. awesome. Um, The first person I ever saw do that, that really changed. Cause when I first started, the first comic I ever saw was Sam Kinison. So you would think it would be Sam Mm. Kinison. It is Mm -hmm. not. Uh, The Mm -hmm. first comic was uh, easily eight years later. I saw Dana Gould. Really? Wow. Yeah, Dana. because Dana, yeah, Dana Gould wow. does these sort of family stories that mm-hmm. are sometimes enormously filthy, <laughs> and you're like, "What are you? This is such a weird, <laughs> yeah. like, how are you?" And so that's what I loved about his stuff. It yeah, was I was it, like, "Oh, you could do that where you talk about like your parents or your siblings, and and then the twist is something so weird or gross or just dumb." And it's just, it made it all, it made everything okay. You know, that's the great, the great comics that inspire you make whatever you want to talk about okay. Like Richard Pryor, mm-hmm. you know, like that. Right. Yeah. Um, actually, one more last question. Uh, and, and by the way, if any of you other guys, uh, the, the regulars on the show have any questions for the, any of the Jackies, throw it out there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Jackies. <laughs> uh, throw it out there. But uh, my, my last one would be, when do you think, this is going to be back to a normalcy. And if it is, what do you think is going to be different about your approach to comedy? Jackie Sanchez. Oh man, hang on. My phone started ringing on my computer. Um, That's all right. I, uh, it's hard for me to answer that because it is already going. That's but right. It's not, You're living it's not normal. It's not a hundred percent normal. You know, there's still rules and stuff. So, 
Uh, but I guess I do want to start traveling. Like I was, I was trying to start traveling and go to LA last year. That was my goal and that everything got screwed. So I do have to wait till everything else is normal, not just Florida. Uh, so I, I'm assuming like a year, I'm assuming mm -hmm. like another year until like a hundred percent normal again, if that. Then you'd still probably still want to check out LA then for sure then. Yeah, I don't know about moving there anymore. I'm, mm -hmm. I probably would end up going to Texas, I assume. Um, mm -hmm. That's just where I'm, where I'm feeling like it's going to go. But I don't know yet. I would like to move somewhere. I've never left Florida. So eventually I'd like to take off and go anywhere. Get cool. Out. And yeah. Kayshawn? Um, I, think, I think it'll be, unless, it, un, unless the variants spike, I th I think that it'll be full clubs again by September or October. Right. But I don't know. I know because uh, I when I got the first shot, I started trying to book the road, and because I'm like, I can go out April thirteenth. I'm you know two weeks after you get the second shot, you're fully vaccinated supposedly, right. and right. so I was like, I will go out April, and I get the the next one on the thirtieth. So. Uh, I had two different clubs offer me the sixth. I was like, what are you, are you just trying to test me? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but I, I gotta, but I'm, I'm hoping to, um, yeah, I, I think I, I'm hoping September or October for, but I'm, I'm going out uh, end of, end of April. I'm doing a 4,000 seat theater in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with 250 people in it. Are you kidding me? That's still. I know. That's Doesn't that great. sound like a good time? It, Actually, <laughs> uh, uh, Ron Funches told me that he did that club, and they and they uh, he did that room, and they blocked it off so that the two fifty made sense. And I'm like, so th hopefully they'll block it off so that it would seat a thousand, and those two fifty yeah. are in <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Not because I'm sure when he went, they blocked it off so it was two hundred fifty packed. Yeah. And but I want, want them to be out. spread out. You don't want that, but I mean, that's great. That's a, that's I April. I mean, emotionally, work. I do. And then I'm gonna bring. Uh, I'm, bring I'm giving everybody a mask. I huh? like that. Joe I brought Joe masks. Joe do you have that as a thong too? Because I'm gonna wear that. Joke. <laughs> you got to cover up your joke hole. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, we'll plug whatever you guys have uh, have um, in in the future or ongoing. You have anything to plug, Jackie? Uh, uh, Kayshawn? Uh, 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 sure. If you join my email list, you'll get uh, you'll get information of how to come to see my Zoom shows, which are every Sunday at least. Uh, and you guys are all uh, welcome if you do stand up to come do a guest set on one Thank of my Sunday so shows. I'll put you on the list at nice. least, and uh, we'll 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 pony through it. Yeah. Amazing. And Sanchez. Yeah. Anything that you want to plug? Uh, not too much. If you're in West Palm Beach, I do a monthly show at the Improv. That, when, what day is that like uh, during the week? Uh, first one is going to be Wednesday, April 7th. And then I got to, I think the next two are Thursdays, uh, but I'm not sure. But I yeah, just, Palm yeah, Beach Improv. Yeah. Huh? I just I'm met Jose. He said he knows you. He helps out with uh, Carlos Mencia and some other guys. He's uh, he's kind of like um, a DJ slash, uh, okay. I, I guess, grip. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'll be down there in uh, May. So if you have any spots open, let me know. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll figure out something for sure. That's amazing. Uh, That's well, thank you guys for being on the show, man. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy to see you, Keishan, after a couple of years. But definitely when I go back to L.A., let's uh, grab some food when uh, when yes, this shit's please. back open. Yes, please. And Sanchez, thanks again. And uh, I hope yeah, to see you guys Yeah, thank you for having May. me. Very yeah, nice sure. to meet you, Jackie. Nice to meet you too, Jackie. Yeah. All right. Well, that was our show. <laughs> um, at Jedro, take us away. And that's it. Thanks so much. 